Shy, 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 shy. shy. Yup. This sound like 150 in a S class. Speaking on my name while I'm on to the next bag. Tell them hoes stick to what they best at. Showing less ass, cooking shit like a meth lab. Walk on beats, I don't need antics. Killing these hoes, I ain't trying to spare shit. Rather be catching a tan, getting pampered. Niggas know I'm in here, no damn drift. Can't fuck with no lames, I got standards. I got edges, walls, manners. They can't stand it. Bag by Jill Sander. Design. What's up you guys, this is Shy, and I'm here at the platform with King Ace and I just want to let you guys know that I don't know if you know that we have black owned water, but we have black owned water 90, 90, 9.5 plus pH positivity water. I had some and I'm a big water drinker and I'm definitely going to be getting me a couple more of these. I know he said they were in Walmart, so go to your local Walmart, see if y'all get y'all some positivity with all this negativity going around. It's Shy, and I'm here with King Ace, drinking positivity water. Get y'all some. Welcome. We back again at the Platform Studios. It's your man, King Ace, King Ace Network. Today, we got a lovely special guest in the building, New York's finest. But before that, let's get into the sponsors. You already know, Bell Home Beer Butter, straight out of Philadelphia. Shout outs to my mans out there in Philly. Bell home bed, mother man. Your bed is your crown. Don't wear it down. You see how my bed looking? We getting it right, fellas. You know what it is. Click the link, discount link, King Ace. You get 10% off. Then we got Positivity Alkaline Water, the best water in the world. You feel me? We got water in Walmart. We got water everywhere. We bringing it to New York. Positivity Alkaline Water. In a room full of negativity, it's always cool to catch that positivity. You heard? It's alkaline in it. Now, back to the princess, e. the queen, <laughs> the Don Diva. Introduce yourself, queen. I go by the name of Shy. Thank you for having me. Welcome. Yes, I'm very happy to be here. You are definitely, you're definitely glowing. Thank and you. I can tell that you are really enjoying this journey right now right yeah i am what is the top thing right now that keeps you going that keeps you motivated mm. just seeing my progress i'm getting better with each time i step into the studio at each time i um do content for something um i'm getting better with public speaking so i'm really just learning a lot about myself through the process and i just like being in the different environments that it presents to me so that I would say that's like the best thing. Are you yeah. one of the artists that likes speaking? I don't mind it only because like I say this a lot. If you went to like if you took like a public speaking class, then you just you know like you know you got to talk all the time. So I'm right. used to talking in front of crowds. So I don't mind it. Yeah, I don't mind. I like it a little bit. I get nervous, but at the same time, it's like I calm down once I get like on the microphone or something. When was your first time on the microphone? Ooh. Like on a stage stage? Yeah. Ooh. Um, when was my first time on a stage? Mm, I guess <laughs> I was my brother's hype man one time because my brother, he also does music. His name is Fifth Power. Um, and he was performing one of his songs, Plenty. It's very old. Um, but I learned all the words because the beat was just fire and I just liked the way he flowed on it. So he performed it at like an event that they had and I just felt the need to just get up on stage and grab a microphone and do his ad-libs. And I was screaming at some points. I, I had to like tone it down because that was my first time. I wasn't sure how do you know like A few it. big artists started at first as like hype men yes. and stuff like that. Exactly. Tupac started as a hype man and look where he turned out. Mm -hmm. I could tell that um, you are like someone. Are you a people's person? I would like to say so. I think so. I think that for you, I could tell that you're doing this because you have passion for it. I think that's what separates you from the rest of them because you don't treat this like a hobby. Mm -hmm. You actually treat this like you, like this is what you want. Absolutely, 100,000%. But what was it before mm -hmm. music? Um, I was actually a teacher. I was a paraprofessional for a third grade class. And... Um, 
I just, I've always been in schools. I've always worked with kids and people with special needs. Teaching. So, yeah, I worked at a summer camp for five years with uh, kids with special needs, and I loved it. I kept going back every year just because, like, it's something about just working with kids and being around them and seeing their development is, that's what I love. So if I wasn't doing, I literally quit my job to start doing my music, like, full time. Right. So if I wasn't doing my music full time, I would definitely still be at the school. Would you say that the teaching helped you prepare for this as far as like knowing others, learning others, reading people, mm -hmm. reading the room and stuff. Are you an empath? Absolutely. Oh my goodness. hundred. I get that from you. Whew. From one empath to another. <laughs> yes. I can sense when I'm in a room with another empathic person. Mm -hmm, definitely. I, I feed off of energy and vibes. Like that's just. And you are a positive energy person. And you, because I'm big off energy, I know that we wear our energy. Mm -hmm. So if you're not good, and if you're feeling a way, if you're not feeling it, your your whole outlook is going to portray that. Exactly. So when you're bubbly, and when you're happy, and you're smiling, I could tell that <laughs> that's when you know it's positive vibes in the building. Right. And I, I don't want this to be an interview where it's so like... Uh, mm -hmm. So I want you to smile. Mm -hmm. You know, I want you to feel free to talk because you are very talented. Thank you. And I never knew that you were a teacher. Yeah. That's the ultimate cheat code. Mm -hmm. Nobody leaves teaching to pursue music. Yeah. And that right there was something that I never heard before. Right, and my kids, I think I think they, I don't know if I want them to listen to me yet when I drop the clean versions of my songs and I feel like, I'll push it. The teeny, but, the, the teeny version. Yeah, but the, their parents have definitely been. That's why, you know, I kind of had to stop that because I didn't want there to be like a a negative impact on my job as far right. as like my music goes with like, you know, the cursing and stuff like that. So that was like one of the reasons why I had to like split. Do you feel like you can do the music without the cursing and stuff like that? Absolutely. I believe It's just like can. a, like a accentuation I feel like it's just like a expression but I could I definitely can I can hold a conversation without cursing so I could definitely spit some bars without cursing. you know a lot of people can't really do that I know a lot of people don't even know how to converse without using profanity like that I know because especially it's in, in the vocabulary mm -hmm. all the time see this is this is like a really uh educational right here because <laughs> I'm learning stuff that I've never even known before mm -hmm. So when it comes to your music, who are some artists who influenced you to want to jump into music? Um, I always say definitely Babs Bunny, only because growing up we watched Making the Band and it was two girls and then the rest were guys and I shout was the girl. Shout out to Queen of the Ring. Yes, and I love Queen of the Ring. I love Babs. Shout out to Babs and everything that she does. Um, so that's definitely my start. Ashanti, automatically right after. I know she's like more of a singer, but just like her whole vibe, the way she presents herself, she's very classy. She's very just like, you know, like just... And a lot know? of people don't give Ashanti enough of her flowers. They definitely don't. They don't. They don't. So that's my I'm glad girl. you said her name because yes. she's goaded. Yes, definitely. She... What? Okay. She's definitely going okay. and she has the vocals. And she's still going. She's on tour right now, still going. That's my girl. Go girl. Yes. Who else? Uh, Queen Latifah. Definitely. Queen. I love Queen. Um, I recently, well, not recently, a little while ago, I met um, Yo-Yo. And that was kind Legendary. of like, what? I was just in awe. Like, I'm in the presence of greatness. And then she told me to call her Auntie Yo-Yo. And I was like, oh, I'm in here. It's me and Yo-Yo. We're like this. That's how I know I was made for this. Because who else got Yo-Yo as their auntie? And Roxanne Shantae as their auntie? Like, Yeah, for, for oh. them to, to, for you to be like, able to get advice from them. Yeah. And stuff like that is a blessing. Yeah, shout out to them. You know, yes. and. The ladies are killing it right now. Yes, they are. You I'm know, loving it. I'm the loving ladies it. are definitely killing it. Who are some female artists that you want to work with? I always say Lotto, just because, like, I just, I love her vibe and everything she does. Like, I just, whenever she drops, I'm like, beep, beep, got that. Um, who else? Queen Latifah, I always say, just because, like, I feel like she gives that vibe that I know, like, just that rock vibe. Like, you right. know, that old school, like, hip-hop vibe. Um, who else would I say? Um, 
Oh. Maybe. Let me reach. Okay. Let me reach. And say Adele. I like mm. Adele. That's that's definitely someone different. different. Definitely. I like Adele too. Her yeah. vocals is out of this world. That, yeah, definitely. Definitely. She's top five. I love Adele. Let me see if I could think of any more. I know there's like, there's legends and legends. I just, oh. There's so many. It, it, there is so many. There is so yes. many. Yes. And I, I love the fact that we can shine light on the female artists, especially the queens, you know, who are the originators of this. Do you feel like being in the industry as a female artist, do you feel like it's too much comparison and not enough unity? Absolutely. I feel like it's every time somebody new comes out, it's always, you look like this, you sound like this, you sound like, why can't everybody just like music? Why does it have to be, I have to pick a side? Michael Jackson or Prince, like, why does it have to be that? Why can't I just like everybody? And that's how I am. I don't really feed into, like, the social media stereotypes of joining which hive and this group and that group because I love everybody. I love all music. So that's just, I'm not trying but to be like Your playlist is diverse. Absolutely. What? I got everything on there. Like, everything. I don't want to embarrass myself, but. <laughs> <laughs> so with it being not enough unity, what is something that you feel like you can tell the ladies what's something that you want to say to them that is like, you know, that you feel like can catch their attention on being unified and not always going at each other because you actually, you actually are right. You get forced to pick a side. Mm -hmm. You know, you get forced to, oh, are you going to be on Cardi's side or are you going to be on Nikki's side, right. you know, and I don't understand why I got to be like that, why everybody just can't work together. Right. You know? Right. So what is something that you want to say or you can say for the female artists that want to pin people against each other instead of working together? Um, something that I would say would be um, we would definitely get more money together than we would separately. Like, just how you said you either pick Cardi or Nikki, a Cardi and Nikki song, like, what, you know, what? We'll go crazy. What? Like, we'll it's go just, crazy. you know, and people feed off of drama and they feed off of, like, the negative, so that's even building more and more. Mm -hmm. So that's why I just feel like the whole, like, sided thing is just, it's like a social media standard, basically, because we didn't have to pick a side before this. It wasn't Luther versus Marvin Gaye. Nobody cared, because we right. loved both of them. We just appreciated their the greatness. The music, exactly. That was it. That was it. Yeah. Now it's about who's dissing who and who's doing this. When really it should just be about the art of the music. Like, show yourself through your music. That's it. That's spoken from a true artist. That is crazy. I, I, yeah, I feel like you have so many political correct answers. <laughs> you are well, Ooh. well, well versed. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. And that's a, that's a good thing. So with you, you know, growing up in Staten Island, how was being able to be yourself and were you able to be free growing up in Staten Island, you know? And did you always know that from your upbringing it was going to result to you doing music? Um, so to answer your first question, just um, Staten Island for me growing up was kind of like, a seesaw? Yeah, like a seesaw because um, I ended up going to like a predominantly white school and I did get made fun of a lot, but I learned a lot in myself to just, you know, stand up for myself and black is beautiful and I'm beautiful and all people are beautiful. And, you know, it's just like little kid stuff. So growing up around those people and around those neighborhoods and getting acclimated and making friends is like we're not as diverse as people make it seem. Like it's not, it's not like that. We all bleed the same blood. Um, okay. And to answer your second question, which was as far as like. Wait, the second question was, did you always feel like you were going to result oh. to music? Yes. Um, kind of in a way, I always wanted to be like a singer. I always, <laughs> it's, it makes me giggle because I always wanted to sing happy birthday at everybody's birthday party. Um, and I honestly feel like if I had taken some like classes or something I could have been up there but it's okay you know it's okay I have other talents um so I definitely was looking at that um 
Acting is definitely one of my other dreams, being a food connoisseur, like professional food connoisseur, like oh, wow. food critic, going here, here, and there. Like there, I want to taste things. I want to do different things. I'm discovering new things to do around the city with food, too. Like man so versus food. I was, yeah. yes, literally that. So I'm like, and then when you said you guys are doing the food truck, right. I'm like, oh, you we'll yeah. do it together. Yeah, you definitely got to taste the wings Yes, one day. definitely. Um... Wow, you really like a one-stop shop. Is it really nothing that you can't do here? Is that a good thing? Yeah, okay. I, that's a great thing. Good, good. R&B is my strong suit. I love R&B. Am I a hip-hop guy? Yes. Mm -hmm. But R&B is where it's at for me. So when you're hearing these R&B records, I know sometimes you wish you could hit that high note. <laughs> yep. Right? Mm-hmm. Who's some R and B artists that you want to work with? R and B. Oh, my first first thought, Queen Naja. Her voice is just so soulful and just it just sends chills throughout my whole body. And I love her story. I've been following her for a long time. Um, and her career is just one that I look up to because she's doing really well. And her voice is just very lovely. So she's definitely one of them. Ari Lennox. She's another soulful voice. Yeah, soulful. Um, Janelle Monae, her. Um, I'm a big R&B girl, so it's like. Yeah, you naming everybody that I listen to. Yes. Because I'm yes. a neo soul kind of person. Yes, me too. I literally have a neo soul um, playlist. Playlist, yes. right? Mm -hmm. uh, I gotta put you on to some more. Please. There's some more Please. women I'm, out I'm, there. I, my new song that I just discovered. Sorry. Um, and I like it a lot is, um, I heard it before, but now it's like my jam is Rain by uh, SWV. Mm -hmm. Just the whole, the, the cadence of the song and just the, the dripping. And just, you got to listen to this artist. Her name is Kiana Lede. I love Kiana Lede. Oh, okay. What? See, you already know. I love know. Kiana Lede. You already know who that is. Yes. Yeah, she's very talented. Yes. Very, very talented. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Definitely. So what is life? For you right now with traveling performing doing the music what is a studio session for you like describe it yeah um so we have the engineer um my mom is always there smoke shout out to smoke shout out to my mom they're always there um sue's always there shout out to sue and um shout out to pete sorry i gotta shout out everybody because that's just where my yeah, heart is always. i don't want to leave nobody out um and molly and everybody else but um yeah so we just i just we put on the beat usually we'll like find it we have shout out to slick slick is our producer he'll okay. send the beats um, there was this one time that I remember we were out to dinner and he sent us a beat and the chills that I felt from that, I was just like, woo, like this is going to be, this is going to be it. So we went into the studio and it's kind of like a formula that we do that we all just mesh so well together. Like they just let me do what I have to do. Um, and sometimes like my mom will come in and she'll be my hype man and we'll do stuff like that. But it's always comfortable. Like I'll just dress comfortably. Like I just like to get in my mood so that I feel the most comfortable in presenting my craft because I would never want to give out like half assed anything. So the studio is like another home. Absolutely. Yes. And you treat it like a home. Mm hmm. Yes, definitely. So you don't need to be in a lit, turned up environment in order to create. I, I couldn't. I like to close my eyes because I like to hear and because I get distracted with whatever's going on. So I'll close my eyes and I'll listen to the beat and I'll listen to the replay and when it's getting mixed and mastered. And if it sounds good when I close my eyes, then I know it's good because I'll get distracted if my eyes are open. <laughs> What's your favorite personal record to date? Of you, mine? That you created. Oh, it's not out yet. Can I still say it? Yeah, go ahead. Hmm. Moment of clarity. Um... Exclusive. <laughs> I'm going to say <laughs> top tier. Top tier? Yes. Okay. Is it just you by yourself? Mm -hmm. Yep. So you listen to it, but it's not out? No. Not yet, but it's coming. It's coming Okay. Soon. Give me another one. <laughs> Walk and yeah. is that out? No, no, not yet. So you're just naming the unreleased. So that means that you are very confident mm -hmm. right now in the music that you guys are making, 
the music that you in the studio putting together. Definitely. So is that uh, putting together a, a EP, a project? Yes. Is that that's why it's unreleased mm -hmm. because the project is coming. Exactly. Yeah, and I'm just I'm dropping little things here. I have hair and nails out right now and bougie and ghetto out right now. Um, dropping something very soon, so stay on the lookout for that. But um, yeah, I, I want to formulate a whole thing so people get to know me as a whole. Because they got the two singles out right now. They're kind of getting a little, right. they're dipping their finger in. It's but, a little taste. Right, but I'm a making the Kool-Aid. Right? Right. I'm pouring cups. Everybody get a cup. What you're doing, what you're doing right now is equivalent to, you ever go through the mall and you see people giving out free samples? Mm -hmm. That's what you're doing right mm -hmm. now. You're giving out samples until you ready to lay out the whole full course meal. Exactly. Exactly. The buffet. The buffet, mm -hmm. we should say. Yes. I like that. How is it maintaining your energy in this industry, though? Oof. Because you could come across people that would make it seem like they want to work with you or make it seem like they for you, but you will learn that that's not really the case. Have you experienced any of that? Which I want to say that, I mean, you guys don't know mm -hmm. that her support system that's here <laughs> today, they don't let nobody get through to her. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Be deep. Yeah. So have you ever been through that yet where you kind of, you know, been through a situation where you were like, all right, I could see what you really want. Here, you're trying to use me for something or or just get close to me for a particular reason. Have you went through that yet? Um, not with my music career, but within life. Because just like growing up and just people like wanting opportunities and things like that, they'll use me to be friends and things like that. Um, but I just try to stay above. Mm -hmm. And try to just stay true to myself because I know that God will remove anybody that's not for me. Right. How hard is it to be yourself? For me, it's not difficult because if you start off being yourself and not portraying something else, then it's like, what more can I show you? This is me. This is me already. So it's not like I have a mask or anything. So... I know you said that you want to get into acting, mm -hmm. right? Have you started with that yet? I have started. I've taken a couple of acting classes. Shout out to Bob. Shout out to Devon. <laughs> I've taken a couple of acting classes. I did a, I did a couple of self tapes, okay. um, but I'm still in the process of getting my you know headshots together, auditioning yeah. stuff like that. Headshots with central casting. Yeah, and, all and for of a long time, SAG was down, so it was like. Now it's back up. Yeah. We're in pilot season. Right. So a lot of directors are shooting because we couldn't shoot like that. Mm -hmm. Right. It was very limited. Very. How does it feel for you to be an independent woman in the industry, in your life, entrepreneur, got everything going on, and still being able to maintain a love life within the industry? It's... I wouldn't say it's difficult as long as you find the right balance. So it's like you can't let like things disturb your peace. That's why I said the studio is like my second home. I wouldn't have like a party in there just because I know like I need this is my think space. This is my space. So it's just like if you find your space and you find where you can clear your mind and you can create your best, then I feel like that's that's kind of the the role that you should that go feng under. Shui. Yeah, the feng shui. Just feel it. That's how I feel. Yeah. You think some people are going to like try to shoon you because you're too independent? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I would hope not because independency is supposed to be a good thing, right? It's true. Mm -hmm. But you know, a lot of people, especially in today's climate, they say that independent women don't get respected like that mm -hmm. because a lot of men feel like it is a threat to them. Mm. You know, have you ever been in a situation like that? No, thank goodness, I would say. Um, but I do I do know, I'm very aware that that does that happen. It does happen. It does lot. happen and it happens frequently. 
Um, and I just, that's why the unity has to happen because it's like, we're already the minority two times over, three times over. So why not just come together and be a fighting force and just like be together? Like it's not always tit for tat and stuff like that. That's why it's just, it's very minuscule things that just, mm. it affects your career. And it's it just does. like, it it's, does. it's not, it's not the way I want to go. That's good, yeah. you know, and I'm pretty sure that with the right team in your in, in your corner that you are going to go far mm -hmm. because the, I don't think there's no cap on your potential. You know, when I first came across um, one of your music videos, I was like, hold on. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Mm -hmm. I strictly thought you were Lotto. Mm. Like, I was like, hold on, is this Lotto? And then when I clicked on the video, I was like, no, this is not Lotto. But the way you were rapping mm -hmm. was kind of like Lotto, mm -hmm. was like Lotto speed. Mm. And I respect bars. You know, I respect if you were a, a woman MC, MC, man MC, I respect lyrics. Right. You know, coming from battle rap. Exactly. That's so, what you hear. That's all you hear. Right. So what makes you be a big fan of battle rap? Oh, for me, it's the feeling I get um, just like when you get something like the the innuendos, the the, you know, the I don't know the, the right. Entendres. Yeah, the double entendres. Mm -hmm. It's like when you and you like and you like make that nasty face that, you the know, jazz like, that, face. Mm, like, mm -hmm. oh, that's how I know. And like oh, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite battle rappers is Don Lady. Like, oh. That, and I went to Queen of the Ring. She's been around for a minute. Oh, what? And I've been following her for, like, the, at least 10 years. I've been watching Queen of the Ring. And when I went, I got to see her battle. And being there and getting the chills in, like, real life. Actually listening to what? it in person. Oh, my goodness. I couldn't have been more grateful. Shout out to Vague. Thank you, Vague. But, I, but it's just, oh, it's just so crazy. So it's just, like, battle rap is the, you know, the how they flow and the, the, the bringing in other people and knowing they real business. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, oh, yeah. it's gritty. And I just love it. It gets, it gets very, very personal. Yes. Very, very uh, gut-punching mm -hmm. at times. <laughs> you know, I, I once did a battle and a guy brought up something that I didn't even know he knew. She and I was like, uh, and, and, you, and the crazy thing about battle rap is, it teaches you who your friends are. Mm. Because if my opponent is able to say something about me. That only you know. That only these group of people knew. Then that means that somebody from my camp leaked something. Mm. I done seen dudes come to a battle with uh, the person, the, their opponent's mother on their shirt in lingerie. That's... Like, they oh yeah That's they OD. they find everything Oof. and anything from your past for real for real yeah that's good so who are your favorite top five it could be man and woman okay top five of battle rappers don lady 40 bars Damn, I feel like I'm going all girls right now, but I really do watch Queen of the Ring all the time. It's all right if you want to rep for the ladies. You can. It's all okay. right. Um, damn, what's her name? What's her name? C3. Um, C3 K, K Prophet. And I just became a fan of Yoshi G. I just seen a battle with her in 40 bars. That It was crazy. It was crazy. Yoshi. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yoshi. Okay, was Yoshi the one, one of them, one of them mm -hmm. just recently that didn't battle? Where it was Tori like, Do. Do. oh, that was Tori Doe. Do. Mm -hmm. Where, yeah, and she like forfeited mm -hmm. every oh, round. Oh, really? Yeah. She didn't come or she just. No, nah, she came. Oh, damn. But every mm -hmm. time it was time for her to rap, yeah. she was just like, go. Yeah. Oh, it wow. was uh, in, in, in Remy, Remy yeah. Oh, in Remy okay. Chrome 20, yeah. yeah. I just started watching that too. She forfeited. So you, you haven't been to one of those yet? No, not Chrome 23. I'm, I've been to Queen of the Ring. Uh, Vague just had his first King of the Ring event. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking to be at more of those, definitely. I, I just enjoy the whole aura, Atmosphere. the vibe. Yes, I love it. I love it. I mean, if you're, uh, if you're a rapper, 
and you like bars, you a fan of bars, mm -hmm. you gotta end up being a fan of battles. Right. That's right? a fact. But how do you feel about people putting the cap on their potential to be full flown artists? I feel like they can do both. Why not do both? Because I feel like, you know, battle rap, as we talked about, is more person. Like, you have your right. personals, you have, you know, your certain cadence, your certain, you know, punchlines that people know and stuff like that. But you can still turn that into, you know, like, songs and stuff. But also, now that I think about it, I don't know if it will be perceived in the same way because when people think about you, they think about you as the battle rapper, not exactly. you as the rapper rapper. That's the stigma that we all hate. Right. When you're trying to listen to a battle rapper with with their songs, with their music, you're not hearing the song for what it is. Mm. You're hearing them and you're thinking battle rap. Battle rap. You're not right. really hearing that this may be a pretty good song. Right, and I could bop to this. Right. You just automatically saying, nah, I can't see myself listening to their music, which is messed up. Mm -hmm. Do you have any battle rappers that you listen to their music? Oh, um, I'm going to be honest. Sue Surf makes the best music out of oh. all battle rappers. I did. My brother, my brother is into all of that, so he definitely yeah. told me about Sue Surf. Yeah. I gotta check that out. I like that. I think with everything that you're doing right now is really wonderful and amazing. When could we catch the the project dropping? Oh, um, definitely soon. With summer's coming up, definitely by summer. I got some hits on there that definitely need to be dropped by summertime. So. I know you got a summer bop. Yeah, you gotta. I know have a you got bop. a summer bop, mm -hmm. beach vibes, mm -hmm. pool vibes, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yes, definitely. I can't wait. Honestly, I've been just playing it myself. Like, oh yeah. So you listening to <clears throat> your whole album? Just... I'm my biggest fan. Yes. That's good. Yes. What sign are you? Sagittarius. Okay. Are you like, are you like uh, full of yourself? Like, do people tell you you're full of yourself? No, no. Maybe as a kid, but no. I think I'm. Mm, I don't think I'm full of myself. I think I'm very confident. I think Which I know what I'm doing, but I don't think I'm full of myself. I'm very, like, I'm a people person. I give people chances. I'm not, like, nobody can touch me. Mm. I'm, like, I'm cool. I think cool. a lot of people would, from, from the outside looking in, right? That's why I'm glad that we got a chance to do this. Because from the outside looking in, most people would think that that's how your attitude would be. Exactly. That's how your personality is, mm -hmm. right? But nah, like you're like so bubbly and you're like so like energetic. Yeah. And you're an energy person. Thank you. Yeah. You know, and I could tell that it's nothing fake about you. That's one thing that I get. There's other stuff, but <laughs> yeah, I, I really, really like that you bring genuine vibes. Thank you. I appreciate that. You made me feel very comfortable. So it kind of like brought it out more. So That's great. the, that right there is one thing that a lot of people don't know how to do. And it comes from, sometimes we have to relearn that from our, from our childhood and mm -hmm. stuff. A lot of people don't know how to actually be a people's person. That's true. And you worked with people, you worked with children. So right. you kind of have to cater to people in a way, mm -hmm. you know? And that's how you read people. Right, and you learn a lot about yourself. You learn patience, you learn grace, you just, you learn how to deal with yourself in certain situations. So yeah, I definitely learned a lot from them. They taught me a lot, I taught them a lot. Do you miss your kids sometimes? I do, I'm gonna go visit them soon. I told them I would, so I have to. They are gonna be looking forward to seeing you now because you gave them that word. Yeah, I know, I'm excited. But you're a real busy woman. Yes, I am, I'm actually, on my way to Miami soon to perform with Method Man and Red Man. I just performed in Detroit with Trina, um, Plies. How was that? It with was Trina. crazy. It was crazy. I had a, a great That's time. That's a legendary moment what? right there. What? It, it felt like surreal. Like it still feels surreal. Like I wish I could go back. Like just being on the stage and it was a sold out show and just like Trina bringing me out and being able to stay after and just experience the the life that I always wanted, that I kind of lived backstage, but right. now it's like me, I love it. I love it so bad. And I'm grateful for Trina, shout out to Trina. Are you guys able to, could we uh, look forward to a uh, feature with Trina the coming soon? Bitch, I don't know, hopefully. Y'all tell Trina, tell Trina. 
Yeah, it, it should definitely happen. Yes. It should definitely I happen. Agree. I agree. That would be dope. That would be fire. Especially seeing like my first single. Definitely. So who's a producer right now that you would want to work with? Ooh. Just a producer. So I, I've been listening to a lot of Lotto. So Go Grease, I think his name is. Um, or is that his name? Or Grizz. Go Grizz. I don't be knowing what oh, they be saying sometimes. Um, on the introduction, the yeah. Tags sometimes on the, it's kind of like. Right? <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely. Um, you know, Metro is hot all the time, so definitely. Um, I'm just trying to get out there. Anybody, Timberland? What? That would be fine. I could hear you with Timberland and Missy. What? Me too. I could hear you with yeah. Timberland and Missy. Yeah. I think you will go really. Good Can I add her to my list from before, Missy Elliott Missy as well? Elliott, yeah, I don't. Right? She like she'd be here, but I always like. Yeah, that's I love. Missy I think it be so much. You know, I know a lot of women artists say that it's not a, it's not enough for you guys, or you're not the you know. I really feel like, like there's a lot of female artists mm -hmm. that if you go back into back in the days. Like you named the Yo-Yo and all of that, Missy Elliott and yes. all of them, Aaliyah and, and stuff like that. There, so many female artists laid the blueprint. So many female artists laid the blueprint. Yes, they definitely did. And I'm grateful to just even be in the in their footsteps. Like, I'm grateful to have them as legends to look up to. It's like a beautiful thing. A lot of people like to say that, you know, our upbringings... Our upbringings uh, determine who we are. Mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. And yes, our childhood and our upbringings determine who we are. But at a certain point, we make our own decisions mm -hmm. and we make our own choices. You know, so with your childhood and the way you grew up, everybody likes to feel like they are entitled to something. Right. You know, everybody want to feel like they're entitled. And you are one of the artists that don't move that way. I don't I don't want anything. I'm, yeah. I'm just, I love it. Like I'm literally I'm not doing it for, you know, money or whatever, fame, fortune, whatever. I literally love what I do. I love doing interviews. I love just being around and just meeting new people. Like this is something I always wanted to do, so I'm just in my element. I could tell that this is your element. I think a lot of you female female artists need to take notes because you came in and hit the ground running and ain't stopped since. And not going. We going up here. Yeah. Not Everest. So what your next show mm -hmm. is going to be in Miami? Yes, with Meth Man and Red Man. I'm excited for that one. That is going to be... You know, I just saw a flyer for that. I just saw a flyer for that. And I'm think, I think I might be able to go. Oh, that would be Is lit. that in May? Um, no, it's actually April, April 27th. April 27th. Because yeah, cause I'll be in Florida next month. Mm -hmm. I thought that it was going to be in May. I would have loved to go to that. Yeah. That is a very, like, um, that, that's, that opportunity alone to be in that environment, you know, those are two legends. You know, everybody watched them. And watched how high mm -hmm. and listen to their music right. and stuff like that. It's you are definitely excelling and living a dream. Yes, I'm, I'm. You know, I couldn't be more grateful. That's why I. That's the bubbly thing. It's like I couldn't be more grateful. I'm very happy. And I I get that feeling because that's exactly how I feel when I'm doing what I love. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to do what I can. I want to do what I want. Exactly. You know, and I don't want to live life not doing what I what I don't love to do mm -hmm. because you resent yourself. You know, you get all the way till a certain age and, you can't. and then you're like, I wasted all my years. Mm -hmm. and you know, you don't want to do that. So all. it doesn't matter how you got to do it. You get it done. And for you to be a newer artist, your grind work, your ethic and just the way you carry yourself, none, nonetheless, is better than, I could say, a lot of females carrying themselves. Trust me, I've been in a room with the females that be the, the baddie shows mm -hmm. and all of that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it be funny to watch sometimes, 
But yeah. Yeah. They don't come close. Mm. To like being in your presence, I'm in a queen presence. Oh, I love that. You know, and I salute yeah, I salute that. <laughs> and you are definitely like I wanna get into your rap style. Mm. Right? So are you more like a punchline rapper? Are you like a you know, lyrical? Or are you more like a you'll get it later kind of rapper? Are you direct with your punches? Because mm. you do watch battle rap. Yes. So are you learning something by like watching battle rap and then writing your bars and the songs? Is it teaching you a way of how to construct your bars? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I remember one of my first, before I even started like the shy persona, when I was working with my cousin, shout out to Intel, um, one of the first raps I ever written fully, um, he sent me a beat and I, I, the, the song was called Tag I'm Lit, so I kind of went off the tag and then my whole verse spun like childhood games, like hopscotch and um, what is that? Like flip? Scully? Yeah, Scully. I, I was outside. I was proud I of myself. I was like, yeah. oh shit, you know, I'm doing this. So like, it's just, you know, the to, to listen to battle rap and to listen to music and just to, to take all that inspiration in and just formulate it to where it works in my brain, to where people, you could either get it now or later, but I just, either way, you're going to get it. Mm -hmm. Like, it's fire, so you're going to get it. So I know we spoke about unity, but I got to ask you this. Are you coming for a crown? Um, do you want to eventually be called one of the best to ever do this? Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to, I don't know of any female rapper with an EGOT, and that's my goal. I want to get my Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony. Right now it's like Angela Bassett, Whoopi right, Goldberg. Right. I'm trying to follow in those footsteps, and if I can be the first female rapper EGOT winner, fire. To do everything. Fire. What? Everything at one. Okay. Yes, that's exactly that. I'm striving for that. That's the top for me. What's some, uh, what's some shows that you feel like you can see yourself acting in, though? Ooh. Old or new? Like, current? Let me it don't see. matter. Maybe like the way like I see myself is like all American, you know, like those kind of like teenage shows. No, that is crazy. I, watch I was a lot just of watching those. that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I, I watch was a just lot watching of those that, shows. Man. Um, you know, like I know Degrassi's not on anymore, but I've always wanted to be on Degrassi. Just like something that I know because for, for acting, you have to step into this character, mm -hmm. and um. You know, like, you know how to be a student. Like, you know how to be a high school student. You know how to be right. a college student. So I feel like those shows are the ones that I would, like, I'm, you know, looking at right now. Um, but, like, overall, like, I'm going, trying to take vocal lessons, get the music going, get into some theater, trying to Wicked and Broadway and Sister Act and all of that. I'm trying to do everything. Everything. I could see you <laughs> in, uh, for some reason, I could see you in the show Blue Bloods. Oh, Blue Bloods. What's that? Wait. It's a cop show. Oh, I was going to say it's the cop show. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm, I know I show. I can see you mm. playing a character to where, not a cop. Huh. I can see you playing a character to where you are like a a, a meddling kind of person. Ooh. Like, I, I, I yeah. Y'all heard that? A meddling kind of person. Blue Buds, call me. I've always wanted to be in like Law and Order, yes, yeah, and stuff like that, CSI mm -hmm. and CIS. Mm -hmm. Criminal I like lines. scientific yes. kind of things. I'm a forensics kind of guy, mm -hmm. so I like fingerprints. Yes, I took forensics um, in high school. It was dope. I did living environment. I did that a too. lot. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan of. Um, you ever watch the show How to Get Away with Murder? Yes. Yes. Yeah, shout out to Viola. I love Viola. Yes, yeah, she ate that. She ate yeah. that show up. That Phenomenal show. show. Yes. Um, Shonda Rhimes, she's amazing. That's the the creator. The, the creator. Yeah, of the show. like Grey's Anatomy. She's mm -hmm. amazing. So that's a black. Yes, Grey's black Anatomy black. is twenty year, twenty seasons. And they got renewed and for like. They still going. Years. I was crazy. just watching it. Grey's Anatomy took me up and down. I stopped a little while ago because I couldn't deal with the the heartache. Because like we talked about, I'm empathetic. So, yeah. whoo, I was crying every episode. I had to stop. I was getting too attached. <laughs> hey, that that's one reason why I don't like. Watching, I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna. This is something y'all gonna learn about me right now. <laughs> I don't like watching TV with people 
that I can't cry in front of. <gasps> For real. Because they're going to be like, those moments sometimes be mm. like, oh shit. Mm. Nah, that's like, his bro, son. Like, that's his son. Like, if I can't do that in front of you and you looking at me sideways because I'm crying because of the show or the movie, then we ain't watching shit. Right, together. right. Because that's one thing about being an empathic person. I could feel it, even if I don't want to. Mm -hmm. It's just naturally, I'm grabbing towards it. It's, it's really a weird thing to elaborate mm -hmm. on. I understand and exactly what you're I saying. feel like trying to talk about it, a lot of people don't understand. really understand Not or unless understand they are. it. Unless you get a, unless you are an empathic right. person. Right. You know, I could be around the individual and I could sense that you feel a way. And you may not be saying nothing, but I can sense that your whole mood changed. Mm -hmm. Auras. I'm really good. You know, I did psychology, so I'm good at... I graduated my psychology reading degree. Reading people. Me too. <laughs> I'm good at reading people. I read face expressions. Me too. Body language. Body language. Mm -hmm. The way your eyebrows go up. That goes into forensics too. Because yeah. I watched something and the guy was like, and they was like, he strangled his wife. All because he touched his neck. I'm mm -hmm. like, wow, that's crazy. You could usually... You could usually tell when you study a human interactions you could tell who's lying mm -hmm. you could tell when a person is not being straightforward yes. you could tell when they holding something back mm -hmm. and you could tell when they faking something yes and some and they repeat it so it's like you get into the habit and you're like oh okay you just blink twice with this eye or you mm -hmm. lying mm -hmm. and a lot of people can talk without giving eye contact right a lot of people do this they look they're looking so, down sometimes, or they're yeah. looking to find something else because a lot of people don't know how to. It's basic human interaction. And I say that to say I feel like that's why a lot of, we have a lot of craziness going on, going on in the world. Mm. Because a lot of people really just don't know how to basically communicate. Exactly. One basic conversation could stop something else from happening. Exactly. And a lot of things happen because of miscommunication. Exactly. So... You know, I'm yeah. from the streets of Brooklyn, but I don't live out here no more. Mm -hmm. You know, I live in Pennsylvania, and I tell people I love it out there. You know, the birds chirping. Uh -huh. I don't want to <laughs> hear sirens all day right. anymore. Right, oh, the trains. The trains, and I got tired of dealing with the nigga moments. You understand what yeah. I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. and that comes from a person can't deal with a person mistakenly bumping them. No, they can't be like, they can't have that intellectual conversation exactly. to find out what happens. It's automatically, and that goes back into what you were talking about, about your environment and how you were raised. The environment were, matters. Right, it does. You know, when you in an environment where everything has to be a fight, then you grow up on survival. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. I grew up on survival. I didn't grow up on love. Mm. But in my adult years, I was able to still gravitate to love. Although I wasn't raised on love, I'm able to give love right. like I was raised on love. Mm -hmm. And that's because that's just who I am. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. man. I love that. This could we could keep going on and on <laughs> right. and on because our our chakras are aligned. I definitely feel like, you know, this conversation could last for a long time. Yeah. I want to thank you for coming. Thank you. This was a very great, enlightened conversation. Yes. And I'm hoping we could do a part two to this. Oh, yeah. I would love yeah, to. Yeah, I definitely would love to do a part two. Um, signing out. This is King Ace Network, The Princess. Follow me. I'm Shy. I am Shy. C-H-E-Y two underscores. Mwah. Love you. And we out. <laughs>